We're talking, of course, about Boston Avenue United Methodist Church. It's something you always look for as you come towards downtown. You, you know you're getting close when you can see the tower. This is when the keeper of the National Register visited Tulsa, and I was fortunate enough to be able to show him Boston Avenue Methodist Church. And the keeper of the National Register claimed that it was one of the three or four best buildings that he's ever seen in the United States. And it is a deco landmark. It's tremendously, tremendously significant. Boston Avenue looked different in the early 1900s when it was in the heart of downtown at Fifth and Boston. As Tulsa boomed, so did church membership, and by the mid-1920s, the congregation needed more space. They hired University of Tulsa art instructor Ada Robinson, a Quaker, to design something unique and fresh. Miss Robinson came up with a design that was unlike any other church. Her former student, architect Bruce Goff, would help get the building off the ground. Boston Avenue is one of the few churches that actually has those kind of clean lines and geometric patterns and you know it's it's very clean and I think that's part of what makes it timeless. Also at the time downtown churches tended to have a front and a back and this church doesn't have a front or a back. It's designed to be a freestanding building and you view it from all sides. Dr. Robinson spent a whole summer when she was first hired to do this, steeping herself in the story of the United Methodist Church, its history, its beliefs, and then she proceeded to tell that story through the architecture of the building. Over the north steps are the three founders of United Methodism, John and Charles Wesley, and then their mother, Susanna. Over the south steps are the circuit riders that spread Methodism throughout the United States in its early days. The praying hands are all around the church, and you will notice that they're all open to receive God's blessing. One of the women on one of the committees, maybe it was the tour guide committee, she actually stood on top of her car one day and counted all of the hands. So when somebody asked her how many pairs of hands are there, she could say, I've counted them and there are, <laughs> and I believe the number is 66. It was one of the first churches in the United States to have a round worship space that was basically pulpit focused where you have a semi-circular seating arrangement. There are no humans in any of the stained glass. And that was because Ada Robinson was a Quaker and she did not believe that there should be um, humans represented in artwork like that, like in stained glass and stuff. So she used um, more symbols in the church. The tower is a very unique part of the church, and, and I think the fact that there is space in the tower is unique. I know when, when people come to see me and they say, where do I come? And I say, well, just come to the 11th floor. And they say, the 11th floor? I didn't realize there was an 11th floor, and actually there are 15 uh, that actually have offices and workable spaces. We have the, the peak that's everywhere, the arch. Um, that's over almost every door, if not every door. It's throughout the building. I think it's a very ageless building, and that's, gosh, that's part of the beauty of the architecture. Um, I know at the time, John Rice, the pastor, said he wanted a building that would impel him to worship whether he wanted to or not, and I think it still performs that function. I still think, you know, when people see it, there is a moment that brings perhaps a, a moment of worship. I'm proud of it, not just because it's my church, but also because it's a place where we can study Art Deco and we can look at, at the building and, and see the approach that is remarkable. Mm -hmm.